Alrighty, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Xanthus Gaming. We're here with an update to our Star Lord build guide. We've unlocked the fifth slot. We've also made some pretty significant changes to talent tree and skills. We're gonna go over all those things in this build video, and we're gonna talk about exactly how to build things out. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into this bad boy. We're gonna start off by looking at gearing. Gearing is pretty much the same as far as stat priorities go. You can still go all ferocity. Then you could go a two to one ratio of ferocity to toughness or all toughness, depending on what you're looking for. If you look at the yellow section below each option, you'll see the bonuses and negatives to each one, pros and cons rather, for each one. So feel free to weigh which option sounds best to you and then just make a decision. All right, moving on from stat priorities on our attributes, we're gonna move into our gearing and we're gonna talk about our gear priority kind of hierarchy that we're looking for. We're gonna start with cooldown reduction as our most important thing because we're spamming a lot of cooldown heavy skills. After that, we're looking for crit damage, and then we're looking for plus added damage to spells. We're also looking for cult percent, all resist, health, health regen, toughness, transfer time, though it is currently broken in this patch, I assume they're going to fix it soon, and then resource cost reduction and casting speed. Note that the transfer time was working last patch, so it should be something that they can easily fix and get going again. All right, after we've looked at the overall priorities, let's look at each piece individually. It's going to be very similar to what it was before. Build flow first on helm, chest, and legs. We're looking for cooldown reduction, casting speed. Then we're looking for damage, crit damage, occult percent, and damage percent. Damage, crit percent, sorry. And then defensive stats. Pretty much all this stuff is the same as it was before as far as the priority on stats. But just in case you didn't see the first video, let's continue going over these. On boots, we're looking at crit damage, occult percent, damage, and crit chance. Defensive, we're looking at all resist, health and toughness, and health regen. And then third, we're looking for build flow with movement speed, spell casting speed. As far as gloves and shoulders, we're still looking for crit damage, percent occult damage, and then percent crit damage. Then we're looking for build flow with resource cost reduction and resource regeneration. Then we're looking for defensive stats with all resist, health, toughness, and health regen. Uh, on our accessories, we're looking for plus Aether or Sacred Damage. You could also be looking for plus Shadow Damage on those. That would be just fine, too. Uh, we're wanting, actually, for our Shadow to be our top thing now, because we took out Shadow as our main spell. And now we have to make sure that uh, Curse applies because it's our highest element. So maybe you'd actually switch that over to uh, Shadow Damage instead of Aether and Sacred. Uh, after that, you're looking for Crit Damage, Occult Damage damage for crit chance percent damage uh crit chance and any other damage types kind of lost my mind there for a second sorry guys after that we're looking for build f build flow with resource cost reduction resource regeneration defensive stats all resist health toughness and health regen for our weapons we're looking for total damage as the first priority you're looking for two or three flat damage types you're looking for Aether, Sacred, and Shadow Damage as the flat damage types. Uh, shadow Damage probably going to be the thing you're looking for the most because, again, you want the Shadow Damage to be the uh, priority for all of your spells. Then you're looking for Crit Damage, Occult Damage, Damage Percent, Crit Chance, and any other damage types. Following that, we're looking for Build Flow, build flow with Resource Cost Reduction, Resource Regeneration. Defensive stats are going to be All Resist, Health, Toughness, Health Regen. And then as we move on from weapons, we're going into gems. Gem priorities are very similar. The only thing that's shifted is that you still want a Sacred on spells, but then after that you want to stack your spell uh, offense two types with Shadow. Again, to make sure Shadow is proccing on all of your abilities. Following that for accessories, we are looking for Amethyst with Transfer Time Reduction and a Support 3 slot. And then armors, we're looking for defensive three with all resist whenever you can. If you have to take it, uh, you could also do HP regen or global life leech. You could also do block efficiency because we are getting some block even though we're not using a shield in this build. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and look at what we're going to be getting as an overview for all the passives. And then we'll go through step by step through the passive tree. All right. So you can go ahead and pause your screen here. I'm not going to read all of this to you because we're going to go through all of it as we go through the Gates of Fate. 
but these are the offensive talents that we're going to be getting from our Gates of Fate. These are the defensive talents that we're going to be getting for our Gates of Fate. Feel free to pause. And then these are the utility talents that we're going to be getting through our Gates of Fate. And again, feel free to pause. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at the different skills on all the abilities. So on Lightbringer, we are looking to increase the charge speed, leave an area of effect when we land. We're also going to change that area of effect into Aether damage, as well as convert the base spells damage into Aether damage. This will also have a chance to inflict stasis upon landing, which is great. Actually, not a chance. It will inflict stasis upon landing, so fantastic. And then we're going to get weakness and shock as well when we land on enemies. So there's three just with our jump. Following that, we're going to increase the chance to apply any other ailments. So should be pretty good. Uh, and I guess I got another skill point. So we'll do average damage or resistance. Actually, let's do resistance for each enemy hit upon landing. That sounds fan flipping -tastic. Then we're going to use tier of ethyl. ethyl. This is a new one for our build. The key things is converting frost to fire damage and then altering the skill so it deals damage over time. Those are the big things. And then we're also going to increase the ailment damage on it. And then following that, you can choose whatever you want. I think probably area of effect or crit damage are optimal and then cooldown reduction. So I would do crit damage and cooldown reduction. You could also do area of effect if you want to. You could make it willpower ha happy or sorry, less willpower happy, but more average damage. I think crit and cooldown reduction is the way to go. You can play around with those last two points as you see fit. Bulwark of Dawn, we're looking at increased duration. We're going to give better health regen per tick. Increase area of effect. We're going to regenerate four shields. If you're running four shields, if you're not, you can drop this talent. And then you can get stamina regeneration if you wanted to. You could also increase the chance to inflict ailments while inside the while enemies are inside the area of effect. This is probably the best one. Um, you can increase the healing rate duration. It's up to you. This last two points, again, it's kind of your choice. Um, I'd probably do the ailments. Healing effect is centered on your cursor location. This is essential for being able to plop down our damage circles. Reduce cooldown. Um, we already talked about that. And grants buff to all resistance as well inside the area. Your Holy Circle will also be doing damage, which is great. It'll be applying Curse and Weakness if you have your Shadow Damage high enough. Your Tear of Ethiel will be Burning and Curse. Lightbringer will be Stasis, Curse, and uh, Shock. Anomaly is going to be Stasis and Curse for runes on that one. We're looking at Vortex Pulls multiple times. Allows the cast to have two Vortexes. Ailment damage increased on enemies inside Vortex, and here's a new addition to our build. Globes pulled into the damaging Vortex explode. We are going to be generating a metric ton of globes because of our passive, one of our passives that we're taking. We're just going to generate like 8 to 10 globes uh, per set of casts, and there's all going to be sucked in and blown up. It actually adds a lot of extra damage, so make sure you don't sleep on this. For our last skill slot, once you unlock it, you're going to run Liver Mortis just to make yourself more tanky. You already have plenty of skills that you're casting all the time. You could ideally put in another element here and get even more damage scaling, but I like the tankiness from Liver Mortis, so I'm doing that for now. Increased attack speed, more threat, health. Uh, this is the big one, Generational Grief. A portion of damage received by you is transmitted to a summon. This is a big mitigation thing. And then damage. Really, the only one that sends stone is Generational Grief. After that, you can kind of play around with it however you want. For Havoc Orb, we're looking at taking increased area of effect, increased chance to inflict ailments on enemies, converts physical damage to rend damage, increases critical damage, fires multiple bombs in quick succession with reduced damage, adds a cooldown to the skill, and reduced minimum range. So if we were to just drop all of our stuff, you can kind of see what this Havoc Orb is going to look like. It just drops all the rage like instantaneously with two quick shots. It's pretty good. If you really get capped out on rage and you're really producing ton tons, sometimes you shoot three, maybe four shots, but it just drains the rage real quick. Gets you back to casting all of your abilities. 
which is exactly what you're wanting, right? By the time that drains, you have your abilities back and you just keep going. You just throw everything on top of each other and just keep spamming it. It's pretty easy. It's pretty user-friendly. You can also charge up your Lightbringer so it does more damage, right? You guys get the idea. Alright, let's go into the Gates of Fate. Uh, as we're doing the Gates of Fate, you're going to see a video playing in the background. It is a level uh, 91 clear on our level 70 character. I have also cleared 100 on the 70 character pretty easily, so seems like it's going to be able to scale up. We'll see as we push higher how it goes as I upgrade my gear. I'll update you guys as needed, but let's go ahead and take a look at the Gates of Fate. Alrighty, as we're looking at the Soldier Tree, the main thing that we're getting out of that tree is the Wild Card, which gives us extra crit chance score. As we move down from Soldier, we're going to move in to the Cab Cabalist. Cabalist? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. The Affliction Tree, basically. And in the Affliction Tree, we're going to grab Immortal Offering. To make it so that when we kill an enemy with ailments, we're going to get a stacking damage buff. We're also going to take multiple things to increase our maximum ailment stacks to help synergize with that. We're also going to grab Power of the First Men, which makes it so that uh, when inflicting an ailment, there's a chance that you inflict double the number of ailment stacks, which is fantastic. Grab Primordial Insights, which makes it so ailment stacks afflicted with critical hits can deal critical damage. This will be good for our lightning. Uh, and then we're going to, and for our burning. And we're going to grab Grievous Affliction, which makes it so that we can apply two different dot types on top of enemies. Absolutely essential for this build. Moving down from the Cabalist tree, we're going to move down into the Eos tree. Within the Eos tree, we're going to grab Dawn's Pious Striker and Sudden Death. This basically makes it so that we execute enemies when they're at 85, when they're down to 15% health. So we only have to deal 85% of their health to them, and then they die and they get executed by that yellow lightning bolt that you see striking them from the sky. It's pretty darn cool. We can ensure that this hits on all all of our spells by putting in a single sacred gem into our uh, offense 2 slot. This makes it so all of our spells deal some sacred damage so all of our spells will execute whether they're sacred based or not. Moving up from here we're going to go into the Praetorian tree. We're going to path through the Scholar tree up to the Praetorian tree where you crit damage, health globe generation. We're going to allow our item, our, all of our weapons to block and then we're going to get some block efficiency. We're going to grab some attack damage and some crit damage. Just some basic defense and offense scaling on our way to one of our really big trees, which is Time Weaver. In Time Weaver, there is just a ton of things that we're getting. We're adding Aether damage. We're adding max ailment stacks, 10 additional there. We're also getting which time cannot heal, which makes it so whenever you deal damage to an enemy with stasis, that damage is dealt again after a short delay, and then we're going to reduce the, uh, or we're going to increase the damage that is dealt on top of that, so it'll deal 120% damage, which is great. We're going to grab Dire Juncture, which is going to stagger the damage, so we take a portion of it up front, and then the rest of it as damage over time, which helps make it just a little bit easier to deal with those burst one-shot mechanics. And uh, yeah, Time Weaver, super, super powerful tree for us. Moving on from Time Weaver, we're going to draw our attention back down to, to the bottom of the tree, where we're going to move through Warmonger to get to our Siegebreaker tree. Within Warmonger, we're going to grab some Global Life Leech and some Life Leech from Spell Damage. After that, moving into Siegebreaker, we're going to be grabbing a lot of talents, almost all of them focused on making us tougher, but there is a little bit of damage gain here too. We're going to grab Belligerent Banner, which gives us just a ton of block chance. We're going to grab the upgrade for that as well. We're going to get some block efficiency with Futile Endeavor. Get some crit hit damage with Landside. Some even more block efficiency with another Futile Endeavor. Even more crit damage with another Landslide. And then we're going to grab Salvatory Anchor and Elevated Gain. We're going to want to try to make sure that our Helm and our Chest are almost always heavy. So that we double the amount of all resist we get from those. The other option you could go with would be Bruiser if we want to go with a high HP with Regen option. 
that is personal preference and completely up to you. After we leave Siegebreaker, we're going to divert our attention back over to the Abyssal Shaper tree. Within the Abyssal Shaper tree, we're going to grab some Occult Damage Scaling. And then we're also going to get a thing which makes it so that whenever we have a uh, curse stack on enemies, which is afflicted through shadow, we're going to deal 5% additional damage to them for each curse that the enemy has. And then we're going to grab the upgrade to change that into 7% for each curse. It's pretty crazy good. It's a lot of damage scaling. And that's the reason we want to get lots of plus shadow to spells on our gear and also do shadow gems now instead of what we were doing before. We want to make sure that curse applies on pretty much every spell. So this scales up our damage quite a bit because it doesn't just scale up our shadow damage. It scales up all of our cult damage, which is like 80% of what we do for damage. So it's very, very strong. We're going to also look at moving into the assassin tree and we're going to grab lots of crit chance as well as some crit damage scaling with merciless lethality. It's a nice boost in our damage to kind of round out the end of our tree. And then finally, we're going to pass through, get some cooldown reduction nodes, and also grab the uh, the Warlock tree up top. I'm actually looking like I don't have that on here for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, it should be showing up, but it doesn't look like it is. Hmm. Is it? Oh, it's being hidden by my video. There we go. So we're getting sorry about that. <laughs> professional by the way uh cooldown reduction occult damage we're gonna get residual energy which causes our next attack which would be havoc orb to do damage based on our previous spells damage eh, it's just a little extra damage in there we get some willpower and rage cap increase and some willpower cost reduction just kind of get some quality of life things to end out the build but yeah that's pretty much the build i'll leave you with the rest of this clear for this video it looks like it's near the end of it but you guys can kind of watch how it plays out to end and hopefully this video guide was helpful for you guys and you enjoyed it if you did make sure you like favorite subscribe comment down below all that good stuff and we hope to see you guys next time have a wonderful wonderful day Uh, do note that this uh, Rift Guardian was particularly, sorry, not Rift Guardian, this Expedition Champion was particularly hard to kill because he did have the tough affects, which cuts our damage drastically. Uh, but we were still able to face tank him pretty easily and get him down. Anyway, again, make sure you like, favorite, share, subscribe, guys, and have a wonderful, wonderful night.